Welcome back, everyone. This is Mr. Vanderpool, and today we're going to continue with our curriculum in AP Macroeconomics. We're going to talk about um, the, uh, the economizing problem, and our goal here is to be able to answer questions regarding how economists solve economic problems. We're going to look at a new concept called opportunity cost. We're going to look at a new concept called the factors of production. Then we're going to look at our first graph um, of first of several graphs in the course, um, called the Production Possibilities Curve. All right. So let's go ahead and review over some key assumptions in economics. Number one, people are rationally self-interested. And they seek to maximize what's called utility. Utility is also known as happy points. If something gives you utility, it gives you satisfaction. It gives you happiness. For example, for me, I really like basketball. So basketball is something that gives me utility. So you can think to yourself, what are some things that give you utility? That's a very common and important economics word right there, utility. People generally make decisions at the margin. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, meaning that people are going to, when they make decisions, they're going to be making decisions based on uh, the status quo, a change from the status quo. And oftentimes when we're looking at decision at the margin, we're deciding if we're going to do one more of something or one less of something. So one unit is very key in marginal analysis. And when people decide to do things, they weigh the marginal benefit against the marginal cost of a decision. And generally, if people do something, they're doing it because the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. We also talked about a very important assumption in economics, which is the ceteris paribus assumption. So economists hold all factors constant except for what's being considered. We talked about the law of demand, which might say, for example, that if the price of apples went down, ceteris paribus, the quantity demanded for those apples would go up. So basically what we're doing there is we're holding every factor constant that would affect um, the quantity demanded of apples besides price. It is only price, that is the only variable that we are looking at, that would affect the quanti quantity demanded of apples. Okay, All other things being equal, the ceteris paribus assumption. Definitely simplifies analysis. It allows you to see the relationship between variables. All right, now I want to move on to the factors of production. So economists will classify resources into four categories. The first one is land. This is also known as natural resources, and the payment for land is rent. You also have labor. This is also known as human resources, and the payment for labor is called wages. People are paid wages for their labor. You also have capital. Now, capital is going to be a product of investment. When we're talking about capital, we're talking about things like tools, machines, factories. Now, the payment for this capital is going to be interest. And then finally, you have entrepreneurship. That's the special ability of risk takers to combine land, labor, and capital in new ways in order to make a profit. And the payment for entrepreneurship is profit. Many of you guys have probably heard of various entrepreneurs out there, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Okay, those are people that took land, labor, capital and created um, something new out of that. Now, a good way to remember these four um, factors of production is the acronym CELL. I love acronyms in my class. So CELL is a, uh, C-E-L-L, -L, is a great acronym to remember the factors of production. It stands for capital entrepreneurship, land, labor, sell, capital, entrepreneurship, land, and labor, the four factors of production. All right, now let's go on to the fundamental problem of economics, and this is scarcity. We already talked about this a little bit in the last lesson, but people have unlimited wants, but, but the resources to satisfy those wants are scarce. Therefore, we have to make choices about how to use our scarce resources, and we face trade-offs or choices when it comes to using available resources. So think about, ladies and gentlemen, the kind of choices 
you made today. I'm sure you made a bunch of different choices today, and these are going to um, have costs. Okay, you have these various choices. When you decide to do something, you can't do something else. When you do decide to do something, you give up something. All right, those are uh, all things that we will, uh, we all uh, problems we have to face when we decide to do things. So for example, let's assume flour is a scarce resource. You have three cups of flour that can be used to make a loaf of bread or a cake, but the three cups cannot be used to make both. And that's a scenario we're going to be using to uh, look at trade-offs in what's called opportunity cost. All right, so opportunity cost. Once a resource or factor production has been put to a productive use, an opportunity cost is incurred. So the opportunity cost is the next best alternative use for a resource. Now notice it is an opportunity cost. There is one opportunity cost. The most valuable thing you gave up when you decided to do something is the opportunity cost. For example, if you have three cups of flour that are used to bake bread, and the opportunity cost, the most valuable thing you gave up, is the cake that could have been baked with those three cups of flour. So no matter what we do with our time and resources, we always incur an opportunity cost. So that's kind of a mind-blowing um, statement there, but whenever we decide to do something, we give up time to be able to do something else. Whenever we spend our money on one thing, we give up the ability to spend that money on something else. Economists very much view the world through opportunity costs. One story I like to tell my students about opportunity costs is when I was maybe 17, 18 years old, um, probably about your age here, um, I decided to do some whitewater rafting down the Colorado River. It was very, 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 very fun. I would recommend, recommend to anybody to go ahead and do that. Um, but what I decided to do actually ended up having some bad consequences. So I ended up, um, I decided to go whitewater rafting and I decided, you know what, I don't, this isn't going to be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and take my keys. I'm going to go ahead and take my wallet with me, whitewater rafting. So I go start whitewater rafting. I'm going down the river and then I hit a swell. And then, so the, my raft goes up and it falls down and well, guess what? I lost my keys and I lost uh, my wallet to the river. Now, I had a very limited amount of time, and I really could only pick up one of the two uh, goods. And so I decided to end up picking up the keys. Now, so what I had there is I had what's called a trade-off. I had a choice. Do I pick up the keys or do I pick up the wallet? I ended up picking up the keys, and that was what's called my opportunity benefit. And the most important thing I gave up when I made that choice was the wallet, and that was the opportunity cost. If I would have ended up picking up the wallet, that would have been my opportunity benefit, and then I would have given up. The opportunity cost of that would have been the keys. So you can think of that scenario how you might have, what you might have done. I didn't really have much time, so I ended up just kind of picking up, picking the keys because they were kind of closest. Um, but nevertheless, that is a good example of opportunity cost. Now opportunity cost comes down to, we talked about canned stuff, well there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. And opportunity cost really is a key component of canned stuff, well, because whenever you decide to do one thing, you give up something else. Okay, opportunity cost. So what I want you to think about, because um, it's important to be able to understand this idea of opportunity cost, I want you to write down in your notes, write down what is the opportunity cost of you going to school tomorrow. When you decide, when you make the decision to go to school, you are giving something up. What is the most valuable thing you are giving up? Write that down. I'll give you a few seconds for that. Okay, so that will allow you to better understand what is the opportunity cost. What is the most valuable thing you gave up when you decided to go to school?